gathering here, there are just a few nutrients that alone can significantly slow down CKD progression that can make a difference. Vitamin D is one. Vitamin D status has tremendous effects on proteinuria, a really important marker of kidney health. Omega-3s and some vitamins are also very important, but there is one nutrient that seems to be even more crucial to maintaining kidney health. I'm talking about a mineral that can be used to reduce proteinuria. The mineral of today's video is also a powerful way to reduce hypertension and to improve insulin resistance. It can help with swelling and water retention as well. It is also essential for the body to use vitamin D. And in some cases, it can be used to completely stop the decline of GFR. On the other hand, having a deficiency in this mineral can make kidney disease progress faster. Yes, I'm talking about magnesium. Question, are you protecting your kidneys already by supplementing magnesium? Today, we will see how to get the most benefits from one of the most important kidney nutrients for those with kidney issues. Now, very important. Most people with CKD are not going to absorb very well standard magnesium supplements. It's also very hard to get enough magnesium from diet alone. So today, we will also see what the correct way of supplementing magnesium is. Before that, question. How can you tell if you have a magnesium deficiency? The kidney plays a major role in regulating the magnesium balance. Magnesium deficiency is very common among people with CKD, especially those taking diuretics and in diabetics. There are many people that should be careful with their magnesium levels. First, those following a Western diet, low in vegetables. And also, those following an outdated renal diet, a diet that forbids eating potassium-rich foods. Because obviously, if your diet is poor in magnesium, you are going to risk a deficiency. More about what foods are the best sources of magnesium in the next part of the video. People with known impaired gastrointestinal absorption issues such as Crohn's disease or IBD may also want to check their magnesium levels. Also, those with a vitamin D deficiency. These two nutrients, magnesium and vitamin D, are strictly correlated. When one is too low, you need to take care of the other two. Never supplement vitamin D without supplementing magnesium. People taking diuretics are also at risk and also those with diabetes or insulin resistance. Now guys, this list includes basically the vast majority of those with CKD. So you may understand why today keeping magnesium levels under control should be recommended to every single CKD patient. Not many doctors do this unfortunately. This is very bad. Unfortunately, magnesium deficiency, which is very common among people with kidney problems, may also cause hypertension, vascular calcification, and insulin resistance, some of the worst risk factors for CKD in the world. This deficiency has also been associated with a faster progression to ESRF. And question, what are the signs of low magnesium levels? Unlike many other deficiencies, you will know very soon if you have low magnesium. Well, if you know what to look for. I can tell exactly when my magnesium levels are low. I feel really jittery and nervous, just like when you take too much coffee but without the extra energy. And I'm also not going to sleep well if I have low magnesium. This is why I usually recommend to supplement magnesium before going to sleep. It can really help you sleep better. Another very common sign of low magnesium levels are muscle problems such as twitches, tremors, and muscle cramps. These are most commonly caused by two minerals actually, potassium and magnesium. So if you have a twitch or frequent cramps, look into these two. Then there's poor sleep as I was saying, it's hard to relax with low magnesium levels. Fatigue is also common, but that's common with CAD too. 
Now, magnesium deficiency also has consequences you are going to see in your test. It causes hypertension, which means that for many people, taking magnesium decreases the need for antihypertensive pills. Another consequence of low magnesium level is high uric acid levels, which is often accompanied with inflammation. Low magnesium levels can cause both these conditions. In short, poor sleep, muscle problems, fatigue, hypertension, inflammation, and high uric acid levels can all be caused by low magnesium levels. Question: What foods contain magnesium? Since magnesium levels are so often low in those with CKD, adding foods that are rich in magnesium to your diet may be a valid strategy. Many of the foods rich in magnesium should be regular in a kidney diet. They're a great way to get plenty other important nutrients too, actually. Some of the best include almonds. Almonds are an amazing superfood. They are a great source of magnesium and they are rich in healthy fats. Compared to other nuts, they are more alkaline, which is great to protect the kidneys. One oz of almonds, around 25 grams, will give you about 80 milligrams of magnesium. Daily requirement for magnesium in adults is estimated to be 200 to 400 milligrams. Another food that can help you get there are Brazil nuts. One oz of Brazil nuts contains a whooping 100 milligrams of magnesium. But don't eat one oz of Brazil nut in a single day. You see, Brazil nuts are a rich source of many nutrients, especially the mineral selenium. This is a nutrient that has proven benefits. A recent study linked this mineral to a rapid increase in GFR and a decrease in creatinine. But be careful with Brazil nuts. You only want to eat one or two of these healthy nuts per day. If you want to know more about Brazil nuts and selenium, watch my video up here. Another great source of magnesium, chia seeds. Almost as rich in magnesium as Brazil nuts, chia seeds are also a great source of omega-3 essential fatty acids that can really help. Chia seeds are also packed with antioxidants and vitamins and are great in a salad or in a smoothie. You can also find magnesium in oats. This is a really underestimated food with many benefits. Being whole grains, oats are really rich in a special type of dietary fiber called beta-glucan. This fiber is known to help gut health and to be beneficial for cholesterol levels and insulin sensitivity. Also consider spinach. While 1 cup or 30 grams of raw spinach has just 30 milligrams of magnesium, this food is still one of the best things you can add to your eating plan. Spinach are incredibly alkaline at the point that they protect you from excess acidity. And they are also an excellent source of iron and vitamin C, two of the most important nutrients for those with CKD. Now you may ask, if I start eating all these extra veggies and fruits, won't my potassium and phosphorus levels go up too much? While the answer to this question was considered obvious just a few years ago, today the guideline doctors and dietitians must follow has changed. Your nephrologist is not supposed to tell you to avoid potassium anymore. So if you are still avoiding potassium and phosphorus rich foods such as banana, mango, flaxseed and more, Watch my video about this topic. It's up here and also down in description. What is the best way to keep magnesium levels in the normal range? There are a dozen types of magnesium supplements you could take. There is magnesium sulfate, carbonate, oxide, citrate, and more. Not all of them will help, as I was saying. In fact, what a recent study on CKD patients found out is that supplementing magnesium carbonate or citrate won't raise serum magnesium levels. Researchers believe that magnesium oxide is the best option. In a study on hypertension in kidney disease, participants took between 240 and 960 milligrams of magnesium oxide each day to lower their blood pressure. The researchers found out that taking 300 to 400 milligrams of magnesium supplements daily was the best dosage. So that's what science recommends taking for people with kidney issues. Taking magnesium with vitamin B6 has also shown to improve absorption significantly. Now, my advice as usual is to first get checked for serum levels if you want to supplement magnesium. You should be especially careful if you have a GFR below 20 or 30. 
Also having too high level of magnesium has its cons. While it won't damage your kidneys, it may still be not something we want. In short, if you have kidney disease, high blood pressure or diabetes, discuss the possibility of a magnesium deficiency with your doctor. Taking 300 to 400 milligrams of magnesium oxide per day seems to be the best way of correcting a deficiency and lower your creatinine levels. Okay guys, as I was saying, the tips of today's video will help you in all the stages. If you want to learn more about what those with stage 4 or 5 can do to improve, my video up here is for you. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless.